we are going to discuss three surefire ways to decrease painful leg cramps you may be experiencing at night, and one of them should definitely work for you. As a matter of fact, number two is a non-drug product that has claims to take away or stop the cramp within 60 seconds. Now, we've had positive reports on this, and our friend Chris, the pharmacist, did a deep dive and actually went to the research to find out how, why, and if this works. We'll find that very interesting, and it is entertaining as well. Another option comes from one of the latest research studies looking at what stretches may help reduce those painful cramps you're experiencing as well. And we're going to finish off with an excellent poll that actually Bob did serious homework on. We polled 392,000 people from our Facebook page, asked them what their favorite or their best product was to reduce or stop cramps. That information will be at the end, and it is very uh, interesting. I found it. Didn't you find it interesting? Very right? fascinating. It is. All right, first we're going to start with the stretches because we're physical therapists and we always lean to that. First, we're going to talk about stretches for calf cramps, hamstring cramps, and quad cramps, the most commonly cramped muscles at night. So we're going to look at a modern research study, which is called Pilot Testing and Stretching Regimen for Prevention of Nighttime Nocturnal Cramp. That is a mouthful to say. They're going to do three stretches like Brad talked about, and we're going to show them now. Pilot testing, like airplane pilot? I guess. <laughs> Just kidding. Okay, we're going to start out with those calf cramps right here. Mike's going to show you the stretch that they specifically did in the study. And here we go, 30 seconds, three times per day, space it out beyond, throughout the day. Go ahead, Mike. So first you need to do is find a wall. You're going to place your hands on the wall. Bring the foot back that you want to stretch like this, and then straighten it out. You will notice the more you kind of bend it and straighten and lean forward, the more stretch you will feel in the calf. You're going to do 30 seconds on this side and make sure to perform on the opposite side. But wait, Mike, there's more. Oh. Can, can you bring this leg back again? A couple important points. So he's talking about straightening the knee, toe straight ahead. If you allow the toe to rotate this way, you will not get a good quality stretch. So bring it in, try and keep the heel glued to the floor. That's what I always like to say to my patients, glue it to the floor. That's from when you're a kid. You can think about that and visualize it and stretch it out nicely. Very good. Yeah, the second stretch we're going to do is stretching your hamstrings right behind the knee here, and they run up to your buttock. You're actually going to perform this in a bed, so if you're getting a hamstring cramp at night, it's easier to do. You're going to slide the leg not cramping off the edge of the bed like this, if possible. Hopefully your bed's not too high. You're going to straighten <laughs> your leg like this, toe pointed up, not plantar flexed like this. And you're going to try to get as upright as you can with your back. I have kind of tight hamstrings, so I'm not super flexible, but get as straight as you possibly can. If you're back here, that's okay if you're feeling a stretch, but try to get up. Hold it for 30 seconds. You can repeat it on the other side if you want. As a preventative measure, I would do both sides before you go to bed. Good. I would like to add some, one thing. If you have to let your toe relax and go like that, that's okay. You, that's only going to help give you a little more stretch on the calf. Um, so do what's comfortable with your ankle. Is that okay, Mike? That's okay, okay. I suppose. And lastly, we're going to show you how to qu stretch the quadriceps. A nice thing is you can do it in bed. You can also do it lying on the floor, but the bed is quite comfortable and uh, convenient. So you're going to start in a side lying position. The leg I need to stretch is going to be on top. I'm simply going to bring my heel towards my buttock. If you're able to reach with your hand, you can pull a little more, get a good stretch. Notice, you probably can't tell from this angle, but I'm keeping a straight line here. I'm not flexed over like this. This is not going to stretch much. You need to stretch the quads like this. We're going to do 30 seconds, and you're going to have to roll over to perform this on the other side. All right, now there may be some people have difficulty grabbing their ankle because they're not flexible enough. You know, if you can get a hold of your pant leg, your pajamas, and pull that way, that is an option. You may stretch them out. The other thing that works well is simply take a belt and loop it around, get it there, and that works very well. Now, tip number two we're going to talk about is a recommendation from our friend Chris, the pharmacist. And the first thing he talks about in this video is apple cider vinegar and how it helps with cramping. And what's the other product, Brad? Well, it's a product called Caleb Trees Old Amish Muscle Tonic, something that is very interesting, and he talks about it in detail. Apple cider vinegar, we've done this before, yep. uh, but this is kind of interesting because... 
Chris has cramps. I have everyone. Most everyone has. Cramps. Everyone has cramps. Everyone has cramps. It seems like uh, leg cramps are more prevalent overall. I don't. Have, we don't have any research on that. But as a therapist, I've worked with a lot of people and tried to help them how to get rid of their cramps with stretching. Uh, and it's always. I can't think of a time where it wasn't leg cramps. Hamstrings, quads, yep. or calves. It always seems to be below the waist. But, I mean, if you think about it, we walk, we stand. I mean, we're creatures that move all around. Right, so right. I think it stands to reason, at least from a logical standpoint, that I think it's just day-to-day -day activity that can lead, you know, whether it's muscle weakness, whether it's dehydration. There's a lot of things that lead right. into it, but it's always below the waist. And it seems to me you know, either, either athletes are more prone to it or Older people in their yeah. 50s and 60s, perhaps. Yeah, you bet. Actually, yeah, statistically, uh, it's it's the majority of people that have cramps, 60-year-old ladies. 60-year-old 60 60 females. Old, yep. And that's yeah. from the research. That's from the research. All right. So for whatever reason, don't know why. Okay. They probably work harder than us. Well, Bottom that's, line. that's a given. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. No. Uh, all right. So we have that information. So... Where's the bottle? Here we go. This is what happened. This is a, the true story. My wife saw this bottle at a hardware store in La Crosse, Wisconsin, and it says, oh, stops leg and foot cramps in about one minute. So she says, oh, Brad, my husband, the famous physical therapist, might be interested in this. So she brought it home, and I looked at it, and I went, oh. <laughs> yeah, it's like going to work yeah. in one minute. So anyways, uh and I looked at the ingredients, and Chris, you research this in detail. Oh, yeah. Because I actually, because Chris was having cramps consistently. Oh, I have cramps all the so time. So I happily gave this yes. to, to Chris, and I says, you can try this. And I think Chris in his head said, ha, 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 ha. Yeah, right. I, I, I renamed it the salad dressing treatment. And, yeah, I mean, and you can tell you can you know, go give them all the yeah, details. Yeah, on this. so uh, this happens to be it's it says proven old Amish formula, and I, I kind of laughed at Brad just like his his take when uh, his wife had mentioned it to him at the hardware store, and I'm like, there's just no way this is going to work for a leg cramp. And we've actually done videos on cramps, and we've done extensive research on cramps, and we've personally had cramps, just like all of you have had cramps. Right. And nobody likes cramps. Mm. They hurt. They wake you up in the middle of the night, or they happen at the most inopportune time. It's just not a lot of fun. So I, I really scoffed at uh, Brad's apple cider treatment. Oh, <laughs> apple you didn't even vinegar. use it. You just put it no. on, the, on the table, and you, he it, called it the salad, salad dressing, dressing because there's yeah. actually a little more than yeah, so apple the, cider. Yeah, the actual in ingredients in here, uh, I, apple cider vinegar, pure organic, unfiltered. It's got the mother. So, mm. I mean, it's, it's, it's everything you want. But it also has a little bit of ginger, and it also has a little bit of garlic. And so in my mind's eye, rationally – as a pharmacist, I'm thinking pharmaceutically, I can't come up with a reason for any one of those three things to stop a cramp. Right. And I'm thinking, well, you know, this could be one of those family old remedies that for whatever well, reason it's... works. And I don't care why it works, but well, Chris, you know, he, it's nice to know because he wants to know how it works. I want to know why, because I like to tell my patients, you know, what really works and why and what we have to be careful with. Sure. And so to me, it's important. And, and so, but one night I had my, my cramp and I'm like, well, darn it. I'm going to go down. And I had to go all the way downstairs with the cramp. Which location to go to the of the cramp? Uh, it, this one was hamstring. Hamstring. So, yeah. So mine usually are at my hamstring, but I do get lower leg ones, particularly my feet. Usually when I'm swimming, they hit my feet. But when I'm in my sleep, it's hamstrings. But <laughs> moving on. Uh, so I... Go downstairs, almost fall down. I get to the kitchen and I I throw I do a I threw a tablespoon in four ounces of water, drank it down. You were still cramping at the time. Cramping at the time, active cramp for probably five minutes, and Ooh. it was not comfortable. Uh, and I'm like, this better. I'm just thinking to myself, this is gonna work. This this better work. I'm gonna make fun of Brad if this doesn't work. And like 30 seconds later, I'm walking across the kitchen to go back upstairs as I was limping, and all of a sudden it just went away. So it released. It released. And there is no explicable reason. Gut transit time is 30 to 60 minutes. So you're going to drink this, and it should take time to go from gut to body to create it. And so that raised a lot of questions for me at 2 in the morning, which is <laughs> not the best time to be thinking, but I was. Um, and so, you know, and that's what kind of bred to this video. But the reality of it is, so we looked at different ways of why apple cider vinegar may help cramps. And there are studies after studies that existed, like 11 people here, six people there, 12 people there. Um, it's hard to study cramping because 
unless you do some pretty mean things to people, it's hard to induce one. Sure. Um, but they do seem to come when we're sleeping or at rest or even during activity. I mean, people, athletes have cramped during games. You'll see uh, football games, yeah. you'll see marathoners, you'll see track runners. With fatigue and heat, I think. Yep, which makes up. sense because, you know, we can always think about hydration and electrolytes, which are kind of the mainstay. And there's, you know, big companies like Gatorade and Powerade yep. that that's how they make their bread and butter off of it. Right. But when we kind of looked at some of this and the amount of evidence that's out there that studies hydration and electrolytes, and there's anecdotal evidence probably at best because there's just not enough wide body of research with apple cider vinegar. The interesting thing about the vinegar was, and the, the first two that I found that were really eye-opening to me, the first one, there was a gentleman that actually was talking about it, um, and he said that he felt that apple cider vinegar could promote more production of the neurotransmitter acetylcholine, which is just something that helps with the muscle actual potential and it makes it work. So nervous nerve. Yeah. Thing. So it is. Yeah, and so, and I'm like, well, that's fine, but we're drinking this. It, it takes a long time to get into the system. There's no way that you could possibly by doing 15 milliliters of this and some water and drinking it, you're going to raise your ass. How much is 15 milliliters of a tablespoon of, full, a, a tablespoon, tablespoon full. Yeah. Just for kitchen old, you know, what's used to yep. measure anything. Yeah. Put so, that in with four ounces, four ounces of, water. of water, drink. Yep. So that would be the dose for anybody at anything with apple cider vinegar. I wouldn't really recommend going beyond that for sure. a variety of reasons which you can touch on. But there's, I just don't think there's any way we can naturally stimulate creating a neurotransmitter to just build up more and stop the cramp. So, so I read another article. I actually saw some Swiss research. And they actually said that they think the cramp is actually from just your brain being scrambled. It's a bad message being sent to the muscle. The muscle doesn't release. So you're in this static state where it's just beating you up and it, it hurts. Everybody has had one knows. Yep. And so when you take this, I mean, you get relief within 30 to 60 seconds. So to me, it's what they actually believed in their research, whether it was consumed or rinsed in their mouth. And this is why they think it was a nerve problem is they think the sourness of the apple cider vinegar sends a signal to the brain and it literally just stops off the transmission that is creating the cramp. Yeah, so, 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 so those basically, great it's, signals saying cramp, 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 yeah. cramp, so turn off. Whether it's electrical, whether it's dehydration or electrolyte driven, they actually think it's nervous driven. And the fact that even rinsing your mouth creates the same effect as drinking it mm -hmm. uh, and having the cramp stop in 30 to 60 seconds seems to me that it's a lot more neurological in nature. Now, again, this is my opinion. I'd say it's much more anecdotal, but that's the only explanation that I can come up with without more wide burgeoning amounts of research done on that. So if sure. there's a research scientist out there, a university that wants to study cramping and the neurological aspects of it, I really do think that there is probably something to this. Sure. So sure. It's, it's interesting. And it, and I, <laughs> I, I have to say it works. It works well. And, and I you, swear by it now. Yeah. And you even wrote an, uh, a testimonial. Yeah. Caleb Trees is uh, the manufacturer that makes this particular product. I think it's excellent. You can get it online anywhere, Amazon, or you can go directly to their website. Uh, but that said, it, it's, it's, uh, I actually wrote on their site because I think it's fantastic. Sure. Yeah. And yeah, I, I just was like, he's never going to take this. I kind of no. give it to you as a joke. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, could, I tried it, and then my son had the same problem, and he's a hockey player, and and outside of the, he didn't care for the taste, yeah. uh, but but it worked for him too. So I mean, so we do want to cross one more bridge here is if you're on some medications, there is some medications you do not want to consume apple cider yeah, vinegar with. Yeah, you do want to make sure that if you're on, there's a special medication for your heart called lonoxin or digoxin uh, that helps control your heart rate and rhythm, and that can affect how potassium levels are, uh, your potassium levels, and that can too with consistent use. No. I would think for occasional use is probably fine, but it should be something you discuss with your doctor and your pharmacist. Mm -hmm. uh, I would happen to, you know, believe that most even pharmacists probably don't pay a lot of attention to apple cider vinegar. Right. It's not in our wheelhouse. I had to seek out the research. It was, and there's not tons of it. Sure. Um, but the reality of it, and, and diuretics, water pills, things that basically make you excrete uh, through urine, you can lose electrolytes. And so when we're using things like this, we have to be careful. Sure. And the last one that we want to be most careful is specifically type one diabetics that have diabetic induced gastroparesis. So that's basically Ooh. where your gut motility doesn't work well. Um, it's this may, cause it slows, um, this is why it might work as a weight loss aid, but, uh, which we'll talk about in a different video, mm -hmm. but that said, it can slow down gut uh, motility. And for people that already have gastroparesis, that can be dangerous. So specifically type one diabetics. So, so if you're diabetic type one, 
best not to take this, perhaps. Yeah, I would. I would talk dis- to your doctor. I would discourage sure. it because it does affect blood sugar, and it, which can be a positive thing. But in a type one diabetic, when you're so reliant, when you're solely reliant on insulin, mm-hmm. um, and and certain things, you know, there's a lot of multi. There's the diabetic umbrella, which yeah. we've talked about in other videos too. We have to be real careful. With sure. That. Right. Right. And tip number three, we surveyed our Facebook page of over 300,000 people and your suggestions. The first one was magnesium supplement of some sort. Some people said a capsule form, some people spray or lotion style, whatever you need to put on those muscles. They said it worked for them to prevent cramps. That's right. Now, if Chris hasn't talked to you into trying some apple cider vinegar and you want to go with these, then we're looking at uh, most popular, what was it? Pickle juice. Yes, the old-fashioned pickle juice, this is nothing new. I think there's been athletes and lay people that have uh, touted about pickle juice for cramps over the years. So, But uh, that is what are... Uh, hmm. Hopefully you like vinegary flavors of stuff. <laughs> it all ties together. This research will eventually work out well for all of us. <laughs> if you want to check out more videos on how to prevent muscle cramps, you can click the link right here. Bob and Brad, the two most famous physical therapists on the internet.